by 6.33. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, it's Wednesday morning, getting into the afternoon. Just wanted to get us going and thinking about Unit 2. I know most of you have gotten your Assignment 1 in. Thanks for doing that. Um, if you haven't, no big deal. I know I think one person's uh, asked for a bit, bit of an extension. So um, just a reminder of my policies of extensions. Uh, no problem at all. Just keep me posted, keep me in the loop as to uh, when you think you'll get it in. And of course, if you need more time, it's always granted. <clears throat> Hope everybody's also avoiding uh, those with kids. Hope you're avoiding those colds and stuff that are going around. All three of my kids had it. My wife had it. Uh, I'm the only one that didn't get it. So fingers crossed. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it's tough with everybody being sick. And, and I know that... Uh, when your household's sick, it's hard to it's hard to get graduate uh, coursework done. So, um, so yeah, just a reminder that uh, I hear you and uh, I empathize with you. So, anyways, on to unit two. I'm just going to bring it up here. I did have it up, but um, something happened. Um, yeah, evaluation and measurement. I think this is where you're going to see that the course content really starts to overlap with the proposed program or project that you've been working on, uh, both in this course and the previous two courses. You'll see that a lot of the work that you do in the course here is really gonna carry over into, um, in particular, kind of that final bigger assignment, your, your project. So we're kind of killing two birds with, with one stone here, which is nice. Um, so for evaluation and measurement, I just wanted to give you my perspective and my experiences with evaluation and measurement because it's a little bit different than kind of evaluation and measurement in the health promotion context. So my experiences with evaluation and measurement come primarily from a peer research standpoint. So, you know, if we're doing a cross-sectional study where we're measuring a, a particular outcome at a particular point in time. So, you know, whether that's how active people are, um, what their depression symptoms are like, their quality of life, their um, fatigue, different patient reported outcomes. We can measure it at one particular time in a cross-sectional context. We've also uh, engaged in measurement and evaluation in an intervention context. So we're measuring at baseline, we're delivering some type of a program or intervention. And I think this is probably most uh, relevant or applicable to what most of you are doing. Um, and then at the end of that program delivery or the end of that intervention, we're measuring again, right? And we're trying to see if there's any type of change in a particular outcome or a, or a construct. That is typically what we would see in kind of a research context, those types of uh, measurement and evaluation. And I know I'm forget, I'm not talking about qualitative, but I'm gonna to get to that in a minute. Um, in the health promotion context, uh, measurement, and evaluation, measurement and evaluation takes on, I think more of a, um, it goes beyond simply measuring how fatigued somebody is or how active they are or how much they smoke um, or whether they're vaccine hesitant or it goes beyond that. So I know you guys are all developing and uh, developing programs. You can call it an intervention if you want. I don't see much of a difference between a intervention and a, and a program that's being implemented. But I want us to think a little bit bigger about measurement and evaluation. So for example, when we're delivering a health promotion program, we wanna know, was that program actually delivered? And to what degree was it delivered? I think we kind of, a term for that is program fidelity. Um, when we delivered the program, did the people that it was designed um, to help, did those people actually receive the program? Was there program uptake? Um, you know, if we're looking at, um, if we develop a smoking cessation website and we send it out to our population of interest, um, sure, we've delivered the intervention, but we don't know whether people engaged in that website, or if that in intervention, if there was any uptake of that intervention. So for an example, in an example like that, we would want to know how often did people visit the website? 
Um, how, often, how much time did they spend on the website? How much time did they spend on the different pages of the website? Um, are there different uh, participant activities in that website uh, designed for them to do? Did they engage and participate in those different activities? So you can start to see that we're kind of thinking more about measurement and evaluation of, um, of the process of delivering that program or that intervention. So sure, we can look at people's smoking rates at baseline. We can look at people's smoking rates at um, the end of the end of the program, but we also want to measure and evaluate how well our program was delivered, if it was indeed delivered and there was uptake. Um, and then also there's kind of participant satisfaction. You know, how, how well did they find, uh, how well did they like the, the website? Did they find it useful? Um, so there's kind of that, that, that patient, uh, I call them patient. Uh, there's that participant satisfaction uh, bit as well that we can, we can think about with respect to evaluation. And then I said I'd mentioned qualitative. Of course, there's the qualitative component, which um, I think some of you will certainly um, include that in your, your your measurement and evaluation plan. Getting participant feedback on the process or the program, um, getting feedback on how it was delivered, the content of the program, whether they felt that it was helpful to them. It's one thing to um, you know have different outcomes that you're assessing, whether it's physical activity behavior, whether it's fatigue, whether it's quality of life. Um, but if they uh, specifically tell you that they didn't find the program very helpful, that's a different type of metric that you can you can use as a, as a source of, of information or feedback on your on your program or your intervention. So yeah, there's lots of different types of uh, evaluation and measurement um, uh, strategies to think about when it comes to health promotion. Uh, there's also, when it comes to health promotion initiatives, there's even um, kind of evaluation frameworks that are out there that you could use. And I think, um, I think it was in 631, you might've been introduced to, um, oh gosh, what's it called again? This is the problem when you um, wing it on these, um, not the reach framework. <laughs> I'm going to Google it right now. Yeah, the reach framework. No, that's not it. Reaim. The reaim framework. I should know that it was developed by Glasgow back in the 1990s. So the reaim framework is is a is an evaluation strategy specifically for more health promotion focused uh, programs where you can look at, um, you know, the reach of your program. How many people did you reach? You know, the effectiveness, the appropriateness and things like that. So there's different evaluation frameworks out there that you can use and implement into your program. Um, so it's a little bit different than thinking, okay, well, I want to measure um, smoking behavior or vaccine hesitancy or physical activity behavior. Um, sure, you can assess the outcomes, but keep in mind that when you're thinking of a larger program, there's evaluation frameworks and strategies that you can um, implement um, as well. Okay, so that's my take, uh, my little preamble on measurement and evaluation. I also wanted to get us kicked off, uh, um, get, us, get us going on Unit 2, uh, in particular... Um, some of the learning, uh, out, uh, the learning resource, not the learning resources, but the learning activities. So I want us to focus particularly on learning activity number two. So designing an outline of an evaluation and measurement uh, plan for the program that you've been developing. So what kinds of measurement evaluation strategies are you going to use? I want you to think big here. Um, think of all different types of measurement evaluation strategies. So qualitative, quantitative, process, program oriented. Um, and then also think about a timeline for that. And then I want you to post it in, in the appropriate unit two form. And so you can get some feedback from your colleagues as well as myself. And of course, that piece will certainly fit in nicely with one of the later bigger assignments that you're going to be doing, um, which is kind of the overall presentation of your, your program. So I just want us to focus on learning activity number two for the next couple days. Um, you can certainly go through the learning resources. Um, there's uh, 
some good ones that are that kind of provide a, a bit of an overview to evaluation and health promotion. Um, there's ones that focus on you know evaluating more at a program level. There's ones that also focus on um, evaluating more at a smaller intervention level. So, so take a look. Um, Pick the ones that you think are most appropriate for you, uh, the ones that catch your eye. You certainly don't have to um, spend hours on, on each of the resources, but you know, choose your own adventure. Uh, take a look and see which ones uh, you think will be most informative to you. Um, and then uh, hopefully in the next few days, we can get uh, some of your evaluation pieces posted in the Unit 2 form. All right, everyone, we will um, touch base soon in a couple of days. Thanks for tuning in.